I think we can all joke about the situation, but in reality, it's a pretty serious situation. I'm not talking about the repair of this truck. I'm talking about what I just found. I just finished a live I'm talking about the Traxxas Max. That's the wide version. The one that Traxxas just released. Leaving links for a pre-order and all that stuff. Went out and dropped off some merch to the mailbox. You know, did the stuff that, you know, I should be doing. When orders come in, try to get them out within that day or the next. Or the next, yeah. So, one of the orders is like a, a extra day late than it should be. I try to get the orders out like that day or the very next day. Because it, it also depends upon like time frame of when the order is received and... Yeah, whatever. So anyways, don't be this guy. Is This is my Sentin, okay? It's my Arma Sentin. I have a blast with this thing. The body's mangled. I had to use pliers in order to get my, uh, or needle nose pliers to get the body pins out because I talk about, you know, drilling out the body pins. It's something you should do. You know, all that stuff. I'm, I'm very good at being the Tony Robbins. I'm very good at being the Tony Robbins of individuals that will tell you, or at least not tell you, but say, hey, this is what you should do. When in reality, when in reality, I should be practicing what I say, or should I say, I should be practicing what I preach. So I haven't drilled out the body pins, but I always tell you, drill out your body pins, that way you don't destroy your tethers. I didn't destroy the tethers this time, but I had a nice little surprise when I went ahead and took the top off of this. So we'll do this, uh, we won't even do this in slow-mo. Do you see that? Do you see that? What is going on with me that I have left a brand new pack that I just got connected in the car for how long? Wow. Like, I mean, I just put the truck away and just didn't even think about disconnecting it. So what I'm going to do right now, it's plugged, it's plugged in. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to check the cells just like I did with what? My DB Pro? And I didn't even realize that that thing was still plugged in. I'm going to check the cells right now just to see what kind of a condition we've got on here. With it still strapped in. Let's see if I've destroyed this battery. We're talking 64% charge. Can you see that? How can I make it so you can see it? Think like that. 64% charge. So cell 1, 3.9. Cell 2, 3.9. Cell 3, 3.9. So we're safe. In that sense to where it's kind of like at a almost storage charge. It's still got the... I still got the stuff on here. This thing is brand new. This may have been this pack's first rip out. And what did I do? I left it plugged in. So don't do this. Don't charge your batteries in the house unless you know what you're doing. And even if you think you know what you're doing, just be careful. That is not the way to handle these LiPo batteries. But what I will say is maybe it is a little bit of a testament to... I guess I want to say the quality of the, these Ovonic packs. I have got a ton of these Ovonic batteries and I don't have, well, I do have one that I did have to do a little bit of a recovery on a cell, but that's the only one and that's a couple years old. I kind of expect that. But anyways, uh, we're not here to talk about the depressing nature of that. What we're here to do is the last time... The last time I had taken the Sentin out, uh, this thing, I really, I mangled this car. I mean, I'm looking at things being like oddly bent. <laughs> like, I mean, why is the front bumper bent? That doesn't make sense. Well, maybe it's just because of that's broken. So a couple of things maybe I could do. Could I maybe fill this up with epoxy? Maybe screw screws in? I actually think I might try that. Well, either way, I've got to replace this, which I do have. You look at this bag right here, which is falling apart. It says Sentin on it. This has got two things in it. 
So not only is this a repair bag that has the axles for the big rock, because I am going backwards. So my arm of big rock has the upgraded CVDs. No, piece of garbage. For me, nah. I think I'd rather just stick with something like this. Unless I find a better axle than, than the Arma Junk Upgrade, I'm not going to go with the Arma Junk Upgrade. So I'm going to go ahead and revert my Arma Big Rock back to stock axles. So I've got these for the Arma Big Rock. But it also came with, like, this kit came with, like, literally everything. Came with the grease. It even came with the grease. But it's got, this is basically a bag of scenting. So what it did come with is it came with, this is rear. So this is the rear upper mount installed with grease. So I don't have to put any more grease in it. But it did come with the upper rear mount. It came with basically all these pieces. And it came with this. So this was the piece that I need to replace. Now... I could just go ahead and replace this. I'm wondering, should I give a shot and replace this piece or try to fix it? I almost feel like I want to try and fix it for longevity. I mean, I know I've got the piece, but if I use a glue and epoxy and then swedge it together with a screw... Is that going to work? Can I actually drill out and screw this piece back together? That's pretty damaged. Uh, you know what? I'm thinking that the way, the way this piece broke off, I don't think that is going to be the best thing. Yeah, so I can see it's actually kind of... Uh, it's wide open, too. So the diff is wide open. All right, so today in RC Guy Garage, we're going to go ahead and replace the uh, Arma Sentence front uh, shock kind of mount, whatever you want to call this, contraption. Diff cover, uh, steering kind of servo area. We're going to see how hard it is on this episode from RC Guy Garage. That's it. Now, some people keep asking me about the grease I put in here. This is also going to expose the negativity about the grease that I use. Uh, so what are we looking at? We're going to be popping, which is, this needs the upgrade already. So this is also going to need the hot racing upgrade because these links are blown. So all my links, while they're holding together, they're, they're totally blown out. Looks like what we've got to do is we've got to take the two screws out of there. So we're going to release the shocks, release the shocks out of there, take the screws out for the bumper, um, release the link. So both links, we got to, that's part of the top case. So just the two links, I think we can essentially leave almost all of this together, take out the, um, the uh, body tower. So the body mount tower. And then it looks like a couple screws, maybe from the bottom here, have got to be released. It looks like it might be these two screws, I believe. Yeah. So these two screws, I believe, are the ones that need to come off. And that is attached to this upper portion right here. And then there is also... I think that screw, no. There's another screw here. So it's one, two, three screws need to come out. And I think, man, I forget. Those two, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if there are too hidden or something like that so let's just go ahead and blast this thing apart so wrong driver so 
I'm going to go ahead and just leave the screws up top here just for now. Was a long one. Same thing here. Ah, it's three screws. That's right. I'm remembering now. It's one, two, three. And that will take off that top section. And this one. Not sure if I got to take that one off, but I'm just going to take it off just to check it out. Got to pick this out. I do think I need to roll that because I don't know if this comes off once I do this screw. Oh, it does. Okay. All right. So let's see. It locks in to that back piece, I believe. So it probably would be beneficial to go ahead and unscrew this, but looks like I gotta vacuum that anyway. And I think I can leave this chassis, um, I can leave this in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kinda put it back. I'm gonna put that screw back in because that screw just holds this down. It just kind of holds this in place where these screws, at least that one, is what allows this to come out. These two screws don't necessarily apply. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and go after this front shock here. Oh, dang it. Same thing with this one. Go ahead and pop this piece out. That seems fine. Pop this one out. And the top is basically coming off already. So I want to elevate the truck with a couple kaijus. If you haven't checked out the kaiju video, um, Red Cat Racing Kaiju EXT is turning out to be an all right vehicle. I'm going to go ahead and release the bumper. At least I think I'm gonna. Ah, there we go. That makes more sense. I guess it helps if your drivers have a magnetic property to them. There we go. Now this should pop off. Swing down. Now going to go after the two links, so the two upper links. Probably be easier if that was still there. That one. And then this one. Checking to see. So 
Looks like the um, shock bolts and the link bolts are the same exact thing. Right there. So the shock and the link bolts are the same exact size. <coughs> the bumper screws are different. So now I can swing that away. Now pop out the links. Now, theoretically, this piece should come off as one unit. And there we go. Oh, you know what? I was never there with my grease. Oh, wow. I didn't even... That's right. I've never serviced this thing. All right. Yeah, I've never serviced this thing. So looking at this mount... Boy, it almost looks like this thing is cracked. Oh, I think it is. Does that look cracked? Yeah, it's funny. It almost looks cracked, but not. See that? There's a line there, but it's equal lines. What the heck? What is going on there? Oh, that must have been... I get it. So this piece, when it smashed off, it actually came across this. Check that out. That is an exact dent of where that smashed into the shock tile. So I'll go ahead and pull the shock tile bolts out. Those are obviously smaller screws. They're not button head, they're cap head. Now I can go ahead and pull this out. Slide this over to the side a little bit, get it more out of the way. So go ahead and pull this out. Yeah, it was buried a good amount. So I'll be able to um, mimic that. But I forgot, I didn't put any of my grease in here. And you know what? By the way that looks, it actually looks pretty good. So now we just transfer that piece onto there. Keep it in mind the orientation. So the shock tile was here. The V was placed towards the back. So I'll go ahead and sink that down. Just like that. And I usually use just a thin driver, like a 1.5. Just to go ahead and locate the holes. And because this is fresh plastic, you're basically boring your own hole. Except for the fact that this would have been a Jenny's takeoff. Here we go. Same thing on this side. Just take a driver. Locate the hole. I think I'm going to do a uh, shop rock. Yeah, shop rock. Shop talk and wrench tonight. Uh, bringing the big rock back to life. Here we go. So that's good there. Now I did want to add my grease to this. And I do have to get my Alexa device out of there. So. This is the grease I use. People keep asking. It's no secret. I'm not recommending that you do this. But I use it. It's a silicone ceramic extreme brake parts lubricant from a company called Permatex. This is for automotive use. But in a ring and pinion situation, this is the stuff that I use because it works very well. Only ring and pinion I've used this on. So I'm going to go ahead, give a healthy little dose right there. Just like that. And that's it. And then just walk away. Take my brand new cover. Should be looking at things. Yeah. So, 
Does this actually have bearings? I think I'm noticing this has bearings. Kind of hard to tell. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a vacuum to that while it's open. Looks like they're bearings. So what I'm still what I'm looking at is I'm I'm looking at the um, steering linkage. And for what I think I'm seeing, I think I'm seeing bearings here. So um, what I am gonna do is just take my 20 weight shock oil and I'm just gonna give just a drop to there. One drop. That's a little bit more than a drop there, guy. And then do kind of like a another drop right there. Looks like they look like bearings. I'll wipe off the excess too. So it's gonna give it some action. So I actually didn't have to take off those those screws on the bottom. What a moron. So I'm just realizing this now. I didn't realize or I didn't notice that the screws that I took out were short. So I didn't even have to take out those screws in the bottom. I'm just noticing that right now. So I'm going to leave that just like that. I'm going to go ahead and place the cover over. Yeah, I didn't even have to do that. Wow. Okay. So it's literally just... One, two, three, four screws on the bottom that you got to take out. Not the amount that I took out. I'm going to go ahead and flip this back over without the um, tire being under it. Because things should still kind of hold together. So let's just flip it over. Because it's going to rest on the shock towers. Yeah, I didn't even have to take those screws out. So don't listen to me. Do not take these screws out. I have no idea what I'm talking about. So these screws are for the servo. Ah, that could be bad. There's one. <laughs> it didn't sound very good. Two. Now while it's upside down, I'll go ahead and I'll go after these screws here. So we've got this long one here. These two. And then this one. So it's only those four. It's not all the ones that I did. So keep that in mind. Don't listen to me. Now we're all set. Throw the Kaiju tire back on. I'm going to go ahead and now reattach my links. So my upper links, which need to be replaced. Watch this. See how they just kind of fall out? Hot Racing makes a very good uh, replacement for this truck which I would recommend definitely replacing these with the Hot Racing Aluminum Links. Fairly inexpensive, do the job, and they're red to match. So the link screws were the same as the, as the um, uh, shock screws, right? No. Link screws were the same as something. Yeah, link screws are the same as the shock screws. So... Go ahead and put this back into place here. Use my little tool just to align it. Definitely a um, 
recommended upgrade is those hot racing links. Go ahead and put the shock in. God, these bits bite. Now we can go after the two screws for this piece. Very simple, fast, easy repair. And now the Sentin is gonna be ready for some more ripping. That's it. That is literally it. It took minutes to fix a vehicle like that. The other thing I wanted to talk about was um, the body. So, <coughs> and there's nothing to save on this. Just take this thing and throw it straight in the trash. Don't, don't waste your time. The other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to talk about the body. Uh, my body is getting seriously mangled. Um, it is getting mangled, I think, from looks like the back shock towers so it looks as though looks as though that section right there is it what is destroying this section of body is it ah i have no idea i have no idea what's destroying that section of the body it's so very consistently mangled, though. I mean, that's bad. The only, um, the only thing that's going to save that is a little bit of tape. So I got some Gorilla Tape. Then I can go ahead and clean this, reform this with heat, and then just use uh, my black Gorilla duct tape that I've got. And that will help put this body kind of back into shape a little bit. But this is definitely a, um, a body that has seen some pretty, uh, pretty major abuse. So we're all cracking all around the shock towers and everything. So realistically what should happen is I should tape this body up. Yeah, this is bad real bad so wow this is horrid tail of this thing got absolutely annihilated so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to wash this body down you don't need to see how you apply tape uh, but what i will do is i'll pop these little pins out i'll apply some tape in here clean this all out kind of like wash it down dry it throw some uh duct tape basically this stuff I got two different types of Gorilla Tape. I got one in the garage, which is a heavier duty, thicker tape. This one I'm going to end up using because it'll conform more to the body edges. And you can see right there, this is just, oh, this might not even be Gorilla Tape. This is 3M. This is just a 3M duct tape, I guess, not a Gorilla. Yeah, the other tape, I'm pretty sure the other tape is a Gorilla Tape. Well, anyways, whatever. So this is RC Guy Garage. This was just a very quick uh, upper shock tower differential case uh, repair that you can do very easily. Just don't remove screws you don't need to. So two screws I didn't need to take out. All the other ones, yeah, they got to take, well, three screws. Three screws I didn't have to take out. One I put back in and two I didn't realize until I had the truck like over and I realized that the... Um, the servo posts were uh, flopping around. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I work on so many things that I guess I just don't necessarily commit things to mind. You know, I'm not like working on just, you know, the 3S line. I'm working on a Kaiju. And even when I did the work on the Kaiju, like, I mean, I've done a lot of work on the original Kaiju and it's the exact same thing. But I couldn't remember that I had to take off that, that, 
uh, rear center brace. Like, I mean, I thought for some reason I could get away with not pulling certain screws off. So, I'm not perfect. Maybe you are, but I ain't. So, yeah, don't forget the merch. Uh, I am not wearing... recording this, which is probably not being seen, but I just got a repairing your file, please wait on my GoPro. And let's see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and I don't know why. Why is my phone? Is it recording? It's not even recording. Record. I don't know why my phone is doing. What the heck? I think it's, ah, I think it's too hot. Uh, these GoPros, man, they get too hot. I'm going to have to switch to another GoPro. I'm still here. I'm just screen, screen recording something I don't know if it's going to be recorded. But I've got to show you guys what I'm dealing with. Oh, yeah, of course. This battery's dead. I'll be right there. Just hold on. I just hope it stays on. Come on. Check this out. Check this out. My phone screen is doing the matrix. Like, I mean, what has happened to my phone? Why is it doing that? Oh no, it's not even recording. What, what is going on here? Nothing's recording. Oh my god. Oh, and it stopped. Ah, never mind. Waste of time here. What's going on? How do I stop this? How do I stop it? I don't know. It probably didn't even catch it. My whole phone was doing some like matrix thing. I hit screen record, but I don't think it worked. This thing overheated. So this was recording at 2.7k which inside 2.7k doesn't work connection hot so no oh, disaster and now it's recording at 4k which is probably horrible so anyways this is rc guy garage i don't even know what happened phones are freaking out gopros are overheating i'm just trying to work on my 3s center it's all fixed now I don't even know. Now I don't even know if the footage is there. I guess I'm going to find out through the editing process. So yeah, this is RC Guy Garage, and I am not necessarily out ripping it. Uh, I showed you the rear tower. The front is what I fixed. I'm not necessarily out ripping it right now because the day isn't like one of those days that's a fun day. So I'm doing things like that I should do, like that thing right there. I think I'm going to go live and work on that thing because that thing blew a shock. And ever since it blew a shock, I just never did anything with it. So, and I really like that thing. I almost want to say I like that thing more than the Sentin. Because of the stupid TSM. And yeah, it's a Traxxas band. That, that ain't why. That ain't why. It's a lot of curiosity. How many of you have ordered the new Traxxas Max wide.